Hope you guys welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car truck SUV reviews on YouTube, and today we are in the brand new 2024 Kia Seltos, courtesy of Fred Beans Kia of Mechanicsburg in Mechanicsburg, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. And so we are in this one today because there are some big changes for the 2024 Seltos, and of course, you do get America's best warranty since it is a Kia, being five years, 60 miles bumper to bumper 10 years 100,000 miles on the powertrain that is wonderful so ultimately in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering wheel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so as you can imagine there are several trim levels for the 2024 Seltos first one being the LX starting at $24,390 S trim level for $24,990 X line for $28,690 EX for $25,790 and lastly the SX for $29,990 that was all starting prices by the way the LX the X line and the SX come standard with all-wheel drive to add all-wheel drive to the S or the EX at $1,500 for the S and $2,200 for the EX, so plenty of different uh, variations when it comes to the trim levels. But when it comes to the power plan, this is one of the main changes for 2024. So the first power plan is going to belong to the LX, S, and EX trim levels. That one is powered by a two liter naturally aspirated inline four cylinder, putting out 146 horsepower at 6,200 RPM, 132 pound-feet of torque coming in at 4,500 RPM, power being sent to front wheels or all wheels through an IVT, that stands for Intelligent Variable Transmission, zero to six 60 time coming in at approximately 8.3 seconds with MPG numbers coming in at 27 in the city, 31 on the highway, taking regular unleaded fuel, which is great. But then there is an all new 1.6 liter turbocharged four cylinder for the X line and the SX. So the trim level that we have today actually is the SX. So we have this all new engine. That's great. 195 horsepower at 6,000 RPM, which by the way is a 20 horsepower bump from the 2023 model year and that is due in part because of the bigger turbo and 195 pound-feet of torque coming in at 1600 rpm power sent to all four wheels through a new eight-speed automatic transmission the new just keeps on going i feel like here zero to 60 time coming in at approximately 7.3 seconds with mpg numbers coming in at 25 in the city 27 on the highway taking regular unleaded fuel yet again and the brakes are great as we have to come to a quick stop on this red light here so braking feels wonderful but anyways i'm getting ahead of myself let me go ahead and touch on the drive modes there's actually a circular dial located just to the left of the shifter that's going to give you normal sport and smart adjusting things like the shift points the throttle response and the steering sensitivity so now having got all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and find it straight away let's put this new 1.6 liter turbocharged four cylinder to the test and let's see how quickly we can get our new 2024 Seltos here up to speed. Three, two, one, go! That's not bad. <laughs> That's not bad at all, honestly. That is plenty of acceleration. It feels like zero to 60 in the lower se seven second range. That's incredible. That Honestly, I wasn't expecting the Seltos to be that quick and uh, that's a really nice engine configuration for the Seltos without a doubt. So no issues in merging onto the highway for sure. And I will say that was its sport driving mode and it did immediately downshift. So it's going to hold the RPMs at a much higher level. And it is really giving you more power on demand at any time that you need it for merging onto the highways and stuff like that. So incredible acceleration for this thing. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so the interesting thing about the braking setup is that it's actually going to differ depending upon whether or not you go with the front wheel drive configuration or the all wheel drive. So for the front wheel drive, you're gonna get 11 inch ventilated front disc, 10.3 inch solid rear disc, but for the all wheel drive, that is bumped up to 12 inch ventilated front disc, an 11.2 inch solid rear disc. As far as that 60 to zero stopping distance goes, it's actually going to come in at a very impressive 120 feet. So typically with SUVs, you find in the upper 120s, if not the 130s, 130s is pretty common in SUVs. So 120 feet even, that is almost a sports sedan good number. And honestly, 
that was one of the first things I muttered to myself. It's definitely a firm braking feel. It does immediately bring you to a stop, which is wonderful because if it throws up a red light like it happened to me while I was driving there, it did immediately bring me to a stop. So I love the braking feel on the new Celtus without a doubt. They did a wonderful job with that. But then touching on suspension and handling, up front you're gonna get a McPherson strut front suspension. In the back, it's going to differ again whether or not you go with the front wheel drive or the all wheel drive. So for the front wheel drive, you're gonna get a coupled torsion beam rear axle. For the all wheel drive, independent multi-link rear suspension, of course, gas pressurized shock absorbers as well. And as far as ride quality goes, it's been perfectly fine my short test drive here today. I'm gonna take it out of sport driving mode because that was a little too much power at any given time. But yeah, ride quality has been perfectly fine. It's absorbing Pennsylvania's rotor perfections. Great, so certainly no issues there. As far as steering feel goes, I got it in normal. Ooh, that feels weird. Uh, let's put it in sport. Definitely weighted a lot more on the heavier side of things in that sport driving mode. I gotta be honest, this is a kind of weird steering feel. This is one of the weirder steering feels I've felt in a while. It's, it's not a good thing or a bad thing. It's just, uh, it's a thing. So it feels like there's a little bit of a delay to the steering. Like when I turn to left, I'll, it'll take a second to kind of think about what it wants to do there. That is, that is weird. I don't think I've ever felt a steering feel like this before. I don't know what to think about it. It's probably something that you get used to, but I don't know. I think I would describe it as unnatural. And that's just my personal opinion. I'm just a guy that's driven over 700 cars, but it just, it doesn't feel quite natural to me. That's all I'm saying. But anyways, then touching on cabin noise, that is actually perfectly fine. Let me go ahead and turn off the air so you guys can get a better gauge of that. I'm going uh, approximately 30 miles per hour right now. There's no wind noise. There's no road noise. And honestly, uh, that's partly due in part because there is an acoustic laminated front windshield. And that doesn't always come standard, by the way, on SUVs, especially in the class. So that is definitely very nice. And quite honestly, it's a pretty serene cabin. So that is definitely above average for the segment, without a doubt. The touching on visibility, I can see fine out the back out of my rear view mirror, I should say. So definitely no issues there either. But that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2024 Kia Seltos. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2024 Kia Seltos finished in snow white pearl, which by the way is a $395 paint option if you were interested, but I think it looks pretty darn good. And again, this thing has been completely refreshed for 2024, another change here, including a wider front grille, headlights have been altered slightly as well, and there is some new trim at the bottom of that front bumper as well. But before we get too much into that, let me go ahead and start with where the Celtos is made. Taking a look at the VIN, first character is the letter K, indicating that the 2024 Kia Celtos is built and assembled in Korea, South Korea, of course. So that is definitely pretty cool. I always like when countries that the manufacturer is native to actually produce the vehicle. So that is pretty cool. But anyways, let's go ahead and start up front on the Celtus here. Black front grille will come on the LX trim level, but you're gonna get a black and chrome front grille for the S, EX, and SX trim. That is what you guys are looking at, of course. And then a gun metal front grille for the X line. X line is gonna be kind of that, uh, off-road trim if you will if you want to call it that but just below you are actually going to find some front skid plates they will come standard projector beam halogen headlights do come on the lx s x line and ex but then led headlights are going to come on the sx trim that we have today so added illumination for the sx trim level i absolutely love that led daytime running lights come on the s trim level and up you're going to get the automatic feature for all trim levels but you're also going to get automatic high beams and that is a feature i absolutely love essentially what that means is when you have your high beams on at night and it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction, it's gonna automatically dim them back to low beams. Then when that vehicle is gone, it's gonna automatically bounce it back up to high beams for you there. So definitely a very convenient feature there. And fog lights are gonna come on the S trim level and up, but you will get LED fog lights for that SX trim that we have today. You guys are looking at those in the bottom corners there. So definitely a pretty cool looking front end and I like the detail that they put in so like this aluminum trend that you guys are seeing right here there's a nice little design element to that it goes all the way across the front bumper here and then it kind of fades out above the headlight here so that is a pretty cool design element anyways that pretty much rounds out the front end of the Seltos let's now go ahead and make our way to the side all right so we're now checking out the side of the Seltos here roof rails will come standard on the S trim level and up roof privacy glass though coming standard on every single trim level across the board I like that got some kind of aluminum-ish belt line molding on the bottom portion of those windows there. Power adjustable side mirrors will come standard. Heated side mirrors though with LED integrated turn signals coming with the S trim level and up. 
Then take a look down at the wheel setup, 17 inch alloys for the LX, S and EX trims, 18 inch gloss black alloys for the X line and 18 inch machine finished alloys then for the EX. And that of course is what you guys are looking at. So machine finished with uh, gloss black inserts, I will call it. But I like the floating roof line towards the back as well. And another thing I wanted to mention to you guys before we make our way to the back is check out these roof rails. I don't think I've ever seen this kind of a uh, design element kind of in the back. It's kind of like a just hanging out there by itself. But a nice little unique touch to the Celtis yet again. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the back of this one. All right, so now since we go around to the back of the 2024 Celtis, all the way to the top, body colored shark fin antenna, just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light, below that rear window wiper, you do have some very obviously redesigned rear tail lights. I do not remember it looking like this in the past because all the way across the Kia logo separating the two tail lights there. And by the way, when it comes to what those tail lights are, they're going to be halogen bulbs for the LX, but all other trim levels being the S trim level and up, you're gonna get LED tail lights. So added illumination at night if you go with the S trim level and up. Got some kind of aluminum trim found on the bottom there. And just below it all, there is a single exhaust outlet tucked away underneath there, kind of on the passenger side underneath. So having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next. As always here is that exhaust clip. Alright, so but now since we are around to the back of the Celtos, when it comes to opening that rear tailgate, it is going to be a manual tailgate that just comes standard on all trim levels actually, but we do have an optional package that gives us the hands-free power tailgate today, so did want to mention that. There's a button on the key fob as well and uh, also a button on the tailgate itself. But anyways, once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 26.6 cubic feet behind that second row. If that was not enough space, there of course is a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down, bumping that up to 62.8 cubic feet then. There is a cargo cover for the SX trim level only. I'm showing that to you guys now. There is a dual level cargo floor for all trim levels across the board. Got some tie down anchors back there as well. And then if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor, you will actually find a spare tire, which I love. And there's actually a decent amount of space surrounding that spare tire for perhaps an inflator kit if you wanted or an ice scraper or something like that. But then make our way up to the rear leg room. That's going to come in at 38 inches even for reference. I mean, even six feet tall. This is how much space I have back there. Rear ventilation does come standard for every single trim level across the board. Gotta love that. That isn't always the case in this class. So I have to mention it. Rear center armrest with cup holders coming on the S trim level and up. And you also get dual rear USB charging ports for every single trim level across the board. So if you got kids with their tablets, they can stay connected. But anyways, then make our way up to the front seats. Cloth seating is going to come with the LX, Syntex cloth combination for the S trim level and the X line, and then a Syntex finish for the EX and the SX. And what do you guys think of this midnight green interior on the seats that we have with us here today? I love it. It's so different. I don't think I've seen this color on any other brand, but that's pretty cool. But manually adjustable front seats coming with the LX, S, and X line, 10-way power driver seat with power lumbar for the EX and the SX trim that we have today. Heated front seats for the X-Line trim level and up, and then ventilated front seats are gonna be optional on the SX trim level. We do, yet again, have that option, so that's pretty darn cool. But overall, seating was all right. Not the very most comfortable, but certainly not bad either. It was pretty much, pretty average for the segment. Now, to make it perfect, you could put vertical seams on this, if you're talking to Yukia, so put some vertical seams so there's no awkward pressure points, and make the power lumbar a little more adjustable. That's what I would do to make these seats perfect, if you can, but then take Taking a look at the steering wheel, it is tilt and telescoping and is leather wrapped for the S trim level and up. And you will get a nice flat bottom if you were to go with the SX trim level that we have today. I love that. I love the flat bottom on this thing. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup. And let me start by showing you guys the key. Got your Kia logo on the one side with the uh, the hold button, by the way. That's a remote start. I love that. And then all of your rest of your buttons, I should say, are located on the side of the key. You got lock, unlock, and the button to pop the rear tailgate there. But 
It is all keyless entry with a push button start. So all I'm going to do here is simply pump my front of the brake and press that black engine start button located just to the left of those air vents there. And so when it comes to the gauge configuration, it is gonna differ depending upon the trim level that you go with. For the LX trim, you're gonna get your traditional analog gauges with a 4.2 inch digital screen in the middle. However, for the S trim level and up, you're gonna get what you are currently looking at right now, which is a 10 and a quarter inch digital gauge cluster, which is stinking cool, I love it. And those gauges will actually change depending upon the drive mode that you put it in. So if you put it in normal, you're gonna get kind of these black hues. If you put it in sport, you're gonna get kind of this red and gray hues and smart it looks like is black as well. But I do like that they adjust slightly depending upon the drive mode. And of course, your steering wheel mounted controls, you can adjust what is on there. It gives you how many miles you have left until you hit empty. Outside temperature, the list goes on, pretty much everything you could possibly want on the digital gauges there. But now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality. A power sunroof is gonna be optional on the EX and the SX. So we got that option yet again. LED interior lighting for the S trim level and up. I noticed that, I love that. Wireless phone charger is going to come on the EX and the SX trim levels, and that's kind of a separate shelf located just in front of the shifter there. That was pretty cool to find. Automatic climate control for the S trim level and up. And again, my favorite part about the interior quality is not only the midnight green interior accents we have in this one, but also these funky speaker covers. They look so good. They're in the back, they're in the front. It's not just a flat design. It's kind of like this uh, biometric 3D kind of design to it. I don't even know if I described that right, but it looks stinking cool and it feels cool too. So I love it. We'll be testing out the sound system in a little bit, but just in front of the shifter, do you have a a little bit of rubberized storage, 12 volt power outlet, couple charging ports, again, the wireless phone charger. Behind the shifter, you got a couple cup holders, a little bit of storage there, electromechanical parking brake. And within the center armrest, there's a decent amount of storage in there. So overall, it's finished how I would expect it to be finished. Absolutely no issues from me, but I would say I would have liked to have seen some uh, home link controls for uh, like three garage doors or something on the rear view mirror, at least as an added option. Maybe it is an option, I don't know. Now let's go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen here, which by the way, again, is gonna differ depending upon the trim level that you go with. So for the LX, you get an eight inch color touchscreen display for the S trim level and up, you're gonna get a 10 and a quarter inch color touchscreen display, of course, to match the 10 and a quarter inch digital gauge cluster. So Bluetooth and audio streaming do come standard either way. Android Auto, Apple CarPlay also coming standard. Factory navigation system coming on the S trim level and up. Of course, can adjust your climate control settings up there. There's a cool little voice memo system where you can record your voice and then play it back at a later date. I absolutely love that. There is a quiet mode where it eliminates the speakers in the back and kind of limits the speakers in the front. So if you got kids sleeping in the back, that should help there. And there is also a uh, sound mood lamp button. Let's go ahead and hit that. And that is pretty cool. So it says mood lamp responds according to the theme selected. So I could put it on party time. I could put it on hey yo. I could put it on midnight city or even romance. So I guess that is going to adjust the ambient lighting depending upon the uh, theme that I put it on. That is pretty darn cool. I absolutely love that. But anyways, you can of course adjust your radio information up there as well. And so when it comes to the sound systems, there are two of them. You're gonna get a six speaker sound system for the LX, S, X line and EX trim levels. And then an eight speaker Bose sound system for the SX trim that we have today. So. Having said that, as promised, let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today, and let's test out the clarity of this one. Yeah, it's a really good sound system, and that's plenty for the Celtis without a doubt. So Bose is a very reputable company. I've, of course, had those sound systems in my cars before, but when I had it in my car, it was an Infinity, and it is here in a Kia, which I love. It's a very... Very reputable company, it's been around forever. Plenty of bass, plenty of clarity, so there is nothing wrong with that sound system whatsoever. But last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen, of course, is when you do put the Celtis in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so first, let me start by saying 
IIHS top safety pick, which is an excellent rating from IIHS, so that's a very good start. Front side side current airbags do come standard. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard. Forward collision avoidance assist with pedestrian detection, lane departure warning, lane following assist, lane keep assist, driver attention warning system as well. Then if you were to go with the S trim level and up, you're gonna get a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert. And then the SX that we have today is gonna to give you adaptive cruise control with stop and go, which is a brilliant system, by the way, on both Hyundai, Kia, and Genesis. They did a great job on that system compared to other brands. But now, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the Celtos, very good safety. I just have to mention that to start. Very good warranty as well. I like the refresh. This thing definitely looks good without a doubt. Wonderful braking on this thing. Instantly brings you to a stop. That's 60 to zero and 120 feet. There's definitely nothing wrong with that. I like the gauges as well. Digital gauge clusters, I'm always a big fan of those. As far as room for improvement goes, steering feel is a little bit uh, unnatural to me at least it might be perfectly fine to you and i would have loved to have seen some uh, uh garage door openers found in this thing somewhere not that there's anything wrong with a little clip-on thing on the visor but i don't know i just like it when it's integrated into the car but anyways let me know what you guys think of the new 2024 Celtos in the comments section below and that is about it for this one you guys thank you so much for watching if you're free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to youtube be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're in new car reviews because that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and i will see you guys all in the next video stay gold